Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Five Paths by Loam Light. It plays two players, takes 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Five Paths, you're basically going to be playing an abstract movement-based unit game, similar to games like Checker and Chess, but with a few unique twists to them. Players are going to be drafting characters they can use of a pool of 10, five in total to begin with, and moving those characters from their enforcement zones, their primary zones, out onto the field. Your objective, capture five opponent's units, or make Make it so that your opponents cannot move a piece on their turn to win. On your turn, you're simply going to choose one of your pieces, roll the die if you need to, move based on the unit's movement, activate any abilities, capture units if you possibly can, and pass turn. And you're going to go back and forth in the game up until the point where you've captured enough units to win. Luckily though for you, whenever you lose a unit and also capture a unit, you can reinforce a character from outside the game back onto the board to give yourself additional advantage. That's the basic idea of five paths, let's show you how to set up and play. So how do you set up five paths? Well, it's actually quite simple. The game's only going to come with a board, a rule book, 10 characters for each player, two of each of the five, and two dice, a red and a uh, blue die, that you will be using or you and your opponent will be using depending on the ability of the characters. Each of you is going to start a draft. You'll choose one of the 10 characters and place it onto the board. For this example, however, I'm just gonna select one of each of the different characters for each player so I can explain them. This player will place one, this player will place one, and it's going to go back and forth until the board is filled. And the only places that you can deploy are in these deployment zones, which there are a total of five on the board. So as you can see, the board is now filled, in which case, then a player, the player who drafted first, will begin the game. And to begin the game, you select one of the characters here and perform its movement and abilities, hoping to capture units. Now, of course, if a character is in a deployment zone, no one can capture that unit. Thusly, you want to position yourself to win the game. Before we start the turn, let's talk about the different characters in the game. The first character is the Gale, and the Gale's rather special. It can move by rolling two dice and taking the sum of those dice. So if I roll a four and a four, I would move this character eight spaces. Additionally, the gale can move on top of rooftops, allowing you to move from one rooftop to another whenever you become adjacent to it. And also it can basically land on units to capture them. And it may stop early when attempting to capture a unit. A rather interesting unit indeed. The next character is the Torrent, and this one functions a lot like the Gale in where you're going to roll two dice, but instead you'll select one of them, and when you move across the board, you can move through diamonds. And of course, just like the Gale, you can stop early and your movement whenever you land on a character to capture it. A rather unique character as well, but with the same principles as the previous one. The next character is the Ark, and this one is quite unique comparatively to the rest of them because this character has ranged abilities. Basically, you'll roll two dice, Use one of them for your full movement, and the other one is going to be the range in which you can capture a unit, provided that you can see the unit. So if you rolled a three and you rolled a two, you could choose to move this unit three spaces on the board, and then you could hopefully capture a unit within the range of two. And if you capture that unit, it functions the same way as if you were to capture a unit by landing on it with either the gale or with the torrent. And of course, afterwards, you'll end your turn. The red character, the flash, is the only unit that has a base movement of three, meaning that when you choose this unit, you will move it three spaces. But what's unique about this one is when it's your opponent's turn, if they're within one or two nodes of this character in line of sight, you're going to initiate a contest in which both players will roll a die. And then if you win, you'll be able to move your opponent's character, his die roll. If it's a tie, his character will stop in place. And if you lose, the character will get to continue his movement as though it was not affected. Thusly, you cannot, of course, make another contest on an individual or single turn. This character can also land early and land on a character to capture them, just like the previous characters, the Gale and the Torrent. The final character is the Kanto, and the Kanto is the most interesting character in the game and probably the most hard to use. This character allows you to roll two dice, select one of them and use it for movement. And then after you've moved your character, if there are any units within one space of you, whether it's either on your turn or on your opponent's turn, they are stunned. Stun units cannot activate and cannot move, 
And whenever you are beginning your turn with this character, while you have a stunned unit or units adjacent to it, you can choose to roll the dice, move with one of them, um, and of course bring this uh, character and one of the stunned characters with you on the board, basically pulling and pushing them across the board to get them into the position that you would like. And that's basically all the different five characters you can select from. There are two of each characters with a total of 10 for each player, and of course your objective remains the same, capture five and win the game. So finally, gameplay. How does the game play? Well, it's pretty simple. The first player will declare a character that they would like to move. Then, depending on if the character needs dice, you'll roll those dice. So, for instance, if I choose the Gale here, I'll simply take the dice here and I'll roll them and add up the sum, which in this case is seven, and move them onto the board. Now, you can only move to an adjacent node. And when you move to an adjacent node, you have to continue your movement up until the point where you hit a stop. And this works for every single character with movement, except for whenever you come across maybe a roof top or a diamond for certain characters. And of course I've got seven here, so I'll select an adjacent node and then I'll move. Well, it's one, two, three, four. I've stopped, but I still have three more movement left. Five, yet again stopped, and six and seven. Once I've moved my full movement, I am done and that would end my turn. Then the next player is gonna get a chance to go. They'll select one of their characters and they'll do the same thing. They'll roll their dice, they'll add the sum, one, two, three, four, and then five, and then it will once again pass to me. And the game will keep going like that using your characters and your different abilities on the board. Up until the point where let's say that one character captures another. So let's go ahead and say that this white character was able to roll one, two, three, four, or more and moved and captured the gale of my opponent. In which case, you'll take the character that is the gale of your opponent and place it in your reinforcement slash infirmary space, which will allow you to get one victory point, one out of five, which you only need five. Uh, you are then going to pass turn like normal. But what's interesting is on a turn, when you have captured an enemy unit and you have one unit removed or more from the board, you can then choose, if you would like, to replace a new unit from your stockpile onto the board. Now, another rule too is, and this was a bad example, you can only choose to activate units that are in your deployment zones. Once your deployment zones are empty, then you're going to be able to move other units. So placing units into your deployment zone while you have characters on the board will make you have to use those units first. So you simply can't, you can't basically choose to utilize uh, this character over and over and over again. You'll have to make this character go, this character go, this one, this one, and then this one. And then when all the characters are out, you can then choose whatever one you want. But as long as you have one in the deployment zone, you must choose that character. And the same is said for when you reinforce units. And that's basically the entire game with all the unique abilities that I've described. Capture all five of your opponent's units and you'll win the game. And of course, the other way you can win the game is perhaps you don't have five characters of your opponents, but none of those characters are able to move. Like for instance, let's say that we had our stunned unit and it was blocking other two units. Then that character or player can no longer move. Thusly, you would win the game as well. It's a little bit like chess, but with some unique twists and different characteristics with the characters and a bunch of unique abilities as well. All right, my review. Five Paths is a chess-like abstract game. Use your five different characters, move them around the board. You can choose whatever ones you want at the beginning of the game of any different combination of different characters. And of course, you're going to attempt to capture your opponent's pieces, utilizing each of the characters. Some characters are actually not so great at capturing, but they are good at stunning or contesting and protecting your own pieces. Others, like the Gale and the Torrent, are absolutely useful when it comes to landing on your opponent's pieces and taking them from them but you have to make sure that your opponent's pieces aren't protected by characters that can either contest them or simply stun them before they reach their objective. Use your wits and strategy to uh, be able to sacrifice certain characters in order to gather a larger variety or useful like outcome or situation that's going to benefit you in this game. The five different characters are really, really cool. I'm able to use a couple of them pretty well, but a couple of them I'm still learning and that's a great sign for this game, which means there's a ton of new and interesting strategy that you can come up with 
as you play to create the best combination of different units, of course, when you choose to draft versus your opponents. Some characters are better equipped against other characters, and so when you choose to draft and when you choose to reinforce, you need to basically think about that when playing. And you're never out of the game. You always have an opportunity to come back, which is nice. Even if you only have maybe three characters on the board and your opponent seems to be dominating you, if you come up with a better strategy than your opponent at that specific point in time, you can start trouncing them and coming back into the game, forcing them to play reinforcements and bringing those guys onto the field, not utilizing the characters on their board, and giving you the advantage in the game. If you like abstract strategy games with unique characters and a unique twist to a strategy abstract game, then this is something to check out. All the artwork is great, feels wonderful, focuses well on the board as well. You understand what the characters do and how they're moving and how they're placed, and you're going to have a little bit of trouble with trying to make sure that you remember all the different abilities as you're moving on the board. Don't forget, when you get within one or two spaces of the Kanto, you're going to have to make, or one, one space of the Kanto, you get stunned, or two spaces of the Flash, you're going to have to do a contest. And keep track of those things, specifically for yourself when your opponents do it, because if you forget, that's basically on you. At least that's how we play. The game's rather simple and pretty straightforward. It would probably be nice to see additional characters come out, maybe an additional expansion or whatnot that allows you to have a larger variety of drafting options. And of course, if you don't like games like chess and checkers, this probably will not entice you to change your mind. However, that being said, because the characters have their own unique feel and pizzazz with them, and you kind of do feel like you're not only just playing an abstract game, but kind of an area control slash movement game, uh, it's got a little bit of an extra twist to it, which uh, I really do enjoy. Now, me being a chess player, this is a game I absolutely enjoy, and it's something I think most of you guys out there who like those type of abstract games, but want to kind of, I don't know, I always call like D and D, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, or role played up. This gives that that extra little bit of uh, interesting feel. All the pieces are high quality, very nice. The board is also really nice when laid out, and it's very very simple to set up, very easy to put down. There's not a huge amount of pieces. It's a game that you can go bam, explain the game, get into it, and get out of it. And of course, you can play multiple times, just like most abstract strategy games. If you're interested in the game Five Paths, there's a link down below in the description. For me, though, a solid approval of Five Paths. Excellent game! Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Five Paths. Like I said, there's a link down below in the description where you can pick up the game. And of course, if you want, check out our subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more reviews of games just like this one and additional games. Plus, if you're watching this video, that means that tonight our live stream is going to be on Facebook at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one, but not this one today. This one, we're going to be playing a pirate game today. And of course, uh, we are going to be doing you know, usually giveaways and all that other kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, join Join us on the stream. Unfilteredgamer.com. We've got additional reviews of games that we haven't played or reviewed here. And if you want to check those out, you can as well. Patreon members, a buck a day goes a long way. Well, actually, it's a buck a month. A little bit more affordable for you. If you'd like to donate to us, it greatly does help us. We greatly appreciate it. It helps us with shipping. It helps us with our live stream costs and our videos and cameras and all that good stuff. So I do appreciate it. And for an additional bonus to this game, you can play with 10 characters. And they all start onto the board. And you can move any of them that you want. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a variant that I made up myself just now. You can you can take it. You can try that out. It, it probably won't work so well. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. And as always, I look forward to choosing five paths with you next time.